On Sunday, America will commemorate the 15th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. And yesterday, I had a chance to do something I've always wanted to do, visit the Flight 93 Memorial in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The bravery, bravery of the passengers and crew members of that flight can still stop me in my tracks. When they got word that a plane had crashed into the Pentagon, they knew the hijackers weren't taking them back to the airport, so they decided to act. Then, bonded by patriotism, faith, and courage, they rushed the cockpit and saved untold numbers of people. And I always wonder if I'd have been able to do the same. I hope so, but I don't know. Here's their story. Thanks for having us to this amazing memorial. I've always wanted to come because um, having worked in Washington and having had so many friends working in the Capitol at the time, mm -hmm. this flight to me makes me extremely emotional. When you think about the brave actions of these men and women on that particular morning, it really kind of culminates with this tremendous 2200 acre memorial. I wonder if you could maybe show me a little bit of how this turned out. I'd be honored to do so. Here along the flight path, it shows at 846 American Airlines Flight 11. This was the first plane that went into the tower. And it was at this point throughout America, I think we could all agree that people really weren't sure what was happening. United Airlines Flight 175 crashed into the South Tower at precisely 9.03 and two seconds. So I think at that point, uh, we all knew that America was, was really under attack. The men and women on Flight 93 had the ability to communicate with loved ones and others from the outside. So they were receiving information in real time. They looked at one another and said, we're not going back to an airport. It is at that side of that boulder, mm -hmm. which is where it finally crashed. Kenny, thanks for being willing to talk to me. Uh, your brother was on the flight. Yes, Louis Joseph Naki II, we call him Joey. So this is the final resting place? Yes, this is uh, where I truly believe the, the spirit of the 40 heroes of Flight 93 are. What heroes? It just amazes me that 40 different individuals from all walks of life had an opportunity that were put in such a situation that no one is trained for people coming together who are getting the information, putting it together. And then the most democratic thing that we have in our country, we have a right to vote. And they vote on a plan. While terrorists are, are watching are piloting their plane. And then they kick it off. They execute the plan. And they prevent that plane from striking its intended target. I don't think when they started their assault that they thought they were going to lose. No. I think they had all the drive in to go home and have dinner with their families. President Bush said it was the first act of counterterrorism in the war on terror. With their brave decision, they launched the first counteroffensive of the war on terror. The most likely target of the hijacked plane was the United States Capitol. We'll never know how many innocent people might have been lost. First battle won because they didn't reach their intended target. Right. They took their lives, their destiny in their own hands, and they said, not today, not tomorrow, not ever. Do you feel pride? Oh, more than that. It's hard. I keep waiting for Joey and all of them to walk out of the trees. <laughs> and the hill they'll dust themselves off. You said you shed your last tear. <laughs> I did, didn't I? <laughs> Joey was an amazing dad, husband, brother, cousin, and friend. And patriot. Yes. Citizen. Very well said. This is him? Yes, it's him. You know, it's, you know, I always come by here, I rub my, my hand back and forth just to let him know I'm here. here with Park Ranger Robert Franz. What is the most frequently asked question that you get? Why did we fill in that impact site? Because when the FBI had finished with the investigation, it looked nothing like it did on September 11, 2001. They turned the site over to the coroner. 
and he looks at those large piles of earth. He's gathered about 8% of the remains, but he realizes he'll never gather any more. That earth there, those piles of earth, are their final resting place. So the question, why did they fill it in? Well, that's why. It's sacred ground. It is. One of the things President Bush said um, in 2011 is that we have a duty to remember and a duty to live. We have a duty beyond memory. We have a duty to live our lives in a way that upholds the ideals for which the men and women gave their lives. You probably have younger people come. How do you help them understand the importance of the site and the historical significance of it? I hope to plant a seed because one day I say I won't be here to tell the story and hopefully one day one of them will be because it's a story that has to be told. Well, it was a really remarkable experience, a very emotional day. Um, Joey Nackey would have been 57 years old today, and so I want to thank Kenny again for opening up and sharing that with me. And you can see the full interview. We have that um, up on our Facebook page because he, um, is, he just opens up and it's very raw. And I realize, Eric, that 15 years later, he's still grieving, and it was really hard to hard to be there, but I thought it was important to go. Yeah, the fantastic package, good job. Um, and you've been saying that for years, you want to get to that place. I think during our road trip, you said there's a way to get there, and we just couldn't work it out, but you got there. Um, look, that represents what America is all about. Yes, you can attack us, you can hit us, but we'll never forget, and we will end up winning this fight. And it's, it's just heartwarming and wrenching to see it happen, heartwarming to see the people who were affected by it, so many of us were, still holding out and still having that much emotion 15 years later. A couple of things that I didn't really remember, Greg, was that there were only four terrorists on that plane because one had been turned away because an INS agent at the airport had said uh, there was something funny about him looking in his eye. And so I asked, well, what happened to him? Because so, they didn't arrest him. Guess what? He leaves. We eventually pick him up on the battleground in Afghanistan, and he's at Guantanamo Bay. Mm -hmm. Which means he'll be Released. out soon. I, I, I think the... I mean the the biggest story for me on 9-11 will always be Flight 93 because to me it's the single most heroic event in my lifetime. Uh, and it's an event that you could actually map your behavior after. I've said this before, you think like 93. In any situation like that, when you risk your life, it is better to die crushing the throat of a jihadist than frozen in fear. And I, I, I was with a musician last night. We were talking about Bataclan and how so many people stood frozen, A, in disbelief, and didn't really believe that they were being killed. And they didn't run, and they didn't, they didn't know what to do. I think a great thing to do would be to kidnap truthers. Just in the middle of the night, kidnap a truther and fly him out there and force him through this. I love the idea that they voted. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's so, and it, of course, it's let's roll. It's Todd Beamer and that whole language. And it's His just. His child oh. was 15 years old this year. Mm. Well, I was just about to ask you about the kids. We were talking before this about. Children, what did you learn there? Well, they, are, um, they expect at this memorial, Kimberly, about 3,000 people to gather. Um, but what's interesting in, in talking to Kenny um, is that the family, there's only four, uh, 33 passengers and five crew, that those families have actually, because they have a shared grief and a shared experience, they come together not just on 9-11, but they'll be together on Sunday. It's really heartwarming, and it just, you know, reminds me again how great this country is, how brave, and the people that were on that flight, they weren't thinking about gender, they weren't thinking about race or religion, they were united in a desire to save lives, and it's just so much of what's beautiful about this country and about what we should focus on for the future and become more united and think about these moments, you know, these Let me add one last thing. We're going to go now next. I just want to remind people, so at this memorial, you can actually pick up and listen two recorded phone calls from, there were about 15 phone calls that were made, only three, well there were four, but there, they have three recordings that you can pick up and listen. And it's not like you're just going to pass by Shanksville on your way somewhere. You have to make an effort to go there. Some people I saw there said it was on their bucket list. Just go. It actually helps you understand what it was like and I think it can make us uh, better people and inspire us going forward. Again, you can see my entire interview with Kenny Nackey and my tour of the Visitor, visitor Center in Shanksville on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the 5FNC.